Hi everyone, this is Tanya from Flying Dog Studio. Thank you for joining me for part two of Inktober My Way, where I draw flowers in my little book. Just a reminder of the flower that I drew for this piece. Here you go. As we get started here, I'm putting some French ultramarine blue on my palette and I'm going to work in the background. I am working wet on dry and I'm using the Royal and Langnickel size 8 round and this is part of their Zen series brushes. So we're just going to work first on the background. I'm not lined anything in the background. It's just kind of freehand. We just had some blue sky and some clouds and then I realized, oops, I did not put a piece of paper between here so that I don't paint on any other pages. Now this is a little book that I made myself. If you have not seen part one of this where I ink the flower, draw it and ink it, I'll link that down below. I will also put the link for how I made the little book. So if you're interested in making one for yourself, this is actually a three by three inch book and they're super easy easy to make and lots of fun. So I'm just going to put on some basic colors here and if you've watched any of my videos you know that I like to layer colors so this is kind of my first layer that I'm getting down and I will come back and soften those edges that I'm not putting any blue on and those will be our clouds. I'm going to work on the background where there is a tree kind of in the distance and I have some Payne's gray and some sap green. That's going to give me a really nice blue green for that. Sort of a forest green, one of my least favorite colors, but we need that for the background. So I'm just roughly putting it in. We don't have to worry about making leaf shapes. We only need that blurry blob that's in the background that gets out of focus when you take a picture. And that's basically what I did here. I went outside to my garden and took a picture of this flower. It was just uh, too hot to stand outside and do this. I live in the southern United States and in October it is still warm. Today it got up to almost 90 degrees and we're at the first part of October. So I didn't really want to stand outside and draw this. I snapped a picture and went back in and drew and painted. So I'm just going to be working on the background of this and I'm going to let you watch me paint and I'll come back in the next part and tell you what I'm doing there. As you can see, I've added just some straight Payne's Blue to my palette and I'm coming back on top of where I have the basic shape of the tree painted in the background and it's still a little bit damp and this is a way of sort of layering colors but also allowing that to blend in with that forest green we already have for the tree. So that gives us some good lights and darks in there and it's the base that we're building up because we'll come back with some other colors on top in just a few minutes. I'm now adding the alizarin crimson to my palette and we're going to start 
with a base color on the petals for that flower. I also have that French ultramarine, which I'm gonna take just a little bit and add to that crimson to give it sort of a purple color. And that's gonna be a good base for us to start on top of this piece. Now, if you have uh, watched my first one, if you haven't, I'll give you a little spoiler alert. I absolutely hate this piece once I get finished painting it but I did want to do a video so I can share with you how not everything that you paint is a success so if you are a beginner in watercolor I've been teaching art for over 20 years and I've been watercoloring that whole time so I can tell you that not everything is a success the thing about this picture that really bothers me you can see that my palette is nice and bright. I do not have muddy colors. You can't muddy colors when you're mixing them with colors that go together like to make purple. If you're mixing more than two colors together then you can muddy your palette. So I'm coming in with colors that are not muddy. They are bright colors but you'll see as I start adding more colors to my palette or to my picture it is becoming very dull the colors are not as bright as what they are on the palette and it took me a little bit to realize it's the pen i use a micron pen which are supposed to be um, safe to use with watercolor they're not supposed to bleed they're not supposed to fade and that is just not true i have used microns before uh, when we take them out of the package my students will say, this is dry. And sure enough, it is. So we've had that problems with, problem with microns. But as you can see now, that flower is almost gray. So what has happened, I have cross-hatched before. I started painting. And then I put the color on top. And all of the ink underneath it just sort of bled out into the paint and made everything gray and it does this through the entire piece the final thing i did on this to try to pull it together to try to salvage it and i do not show that at the end you will see the final piece after i've already done that but i'm not including that footage i forgot to film it but i come back over it when i'm done and i use the micron again and i go back over things that i've already cross hatched and hatched and make it a little bit darker in those areas to kind of define some things but overall i would say i was very displeased with this and the micron was the problem so i want to tell you what i'm doing at this point as you can see i've taken yellow and put it on the stem and I do have other another video where I've layered some color to show you how I do that. But what we do with that, you put the base color on, which was the yellow. And I did not let it completely dry. Usually I let it completely dry, but I did want to make some green. So I tuck the blue and put it on top of that yellow and allowed it to blend in on the page. So the yellow is already starting to soak in. And then we put the blue on top and we sort of get some shadows with that blue. And I can come back later and once it's dry and put some other colors on top. And that is really the way I like to layer colors. I like to let them dry, which is what I've done with the petals. You can see I'm coming back with some purple on top of the color I already have. And this is the shadow that is created. The sun was shining from the other side of the flower. And those petals were darker in some areas and they had more of a purple to them. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm adding that purple and that pink that's on there is already dry, but because watercolor, the nature of watercolor being transparent, we can still use that color underneath. So that is a good way to build colors. It makes it more interesting than just putting down a straight pink or a straight purple. It allows you to build those colors.
Again, this is another layering technique. The sky is already dry. We had used the French ultramarine blue earlier and now we're using that bright Windsor blue. That, that's my favorite color. I love that blue. It's my favorite blue in the whole set. And we're coming back and getting some brighter colors up at the top and adding the brighter colors on top because I haven't inked anything there, they stay true and bright, which makes that flower look even more dull, sadly. I am also using just some straight water and softening those edges and making those clouds. And we're gonna keep doing that with the sky and also with that tree in the background. With the dark colors in the tree all set and dry, we are coming back with some sap green on top. Now this is one of those rules that, as I've said in previous videos, if there are rules to watercolor, I have broken the rules. Remember, do what works for you. It, there are a million ways to do one thing. I always say that in my digital art, and it's true with all mediums there are many ways to do the same thing. So you're really, most artists will start with the light colors and then they'll put the dark colors on top with watercolor, but because it's transparent, we can still use that transparency and put the dark color down first and put the lighter color on top. As you can see, we still got a good layered green. We have some nice shadows and then we have some nice middle colors and some nice light colors. So now I'm going back over those petals and I'm trying to brighten them up at this point and we're putting some more of that wonderful crimson, just straight crimson right on top of those, on top of everything and taking advantage of that transparency. So it does help a bit, but again, it, it's reactivating that ink and it makes it a bit darker than what I wanted for that flower. A good thing to remember when you are laying down colors on a piece, if you start light with a color as we did this crimson, you can always come back when the layers dry and add more on top. And that will help you to get the lights and the darks as far as one color goes because even though it's the same color, once it dries and we put the same color back on top, you are going to get a darker shade. So we're gonna take advantage of that in this piece and we're coming back with just some of the straight colors we've already used. Just again, getting some good values in here. You want to always have darks, mediums, and lights. So check your pieces on that. You can run your piece, you can take a picture of it uh, while you're working and run it through your phone and put it through the uh, black and white filter on your phone in the photos. And you can see if you have good 
lights, mediums, and darks. If you just have lights and mediums, go back and add some darks. It's really hard if you start with just medium and dark when you're laying down the color because you have to come back and pull some color out. Now, because I added so much color trying to get the bright, you're gonna see me do that here at the end. I'm gonna take my scrubber brush and I'm gonna to have to pull some of that color off. It's easy to put it on, it's hard to get it off. You have to be very gentle in doing that. If you find that you have too many darks and mediums but not enough lights, when you go to do a value check on it, then you can pull those colors up. But with watercolor paper, you have to do it a specific way or you can compromise the integrity of the paper. At this point, I'm working on getting the final shadows on that flower and I'm using Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is a wonderful color. It allows me to quickly get those shadows. I can layer it right on top of the colors I already have and it works wonderfully well with blues and greens. So the Payne's Gray is going on. It's going to allow us to round the top of that where the bud opens up at the top of that stem. It's going to allow that to be more rounded at the tips of the green parts coming out there we're going to put a little bit there because those get all dry and shriveled and have shadows so that helps us to get all of those shadows in
as I'm nearing the end, I'm getting to the point where I'm going to be lifting color. Now that's my scrubber brush. It looks yellow on the end. It's actually stained. Those white bristles stain very badly. What I'm doing is I'm getting the bristles wet. I'm tapping it on my brush or my paper towel to make sure the brush does not have any excess water. And I'm gently going back and forth on those petals and lifting some color. It looks as if I'm doing it hard. I'm really not. I've speeded up the video. So that is not accurate what you're seeing. So be very gentle when you do this. You can also do this um, with synthetic bristles if they're stiff. Any synth stiff synthetic bristles, you can do this. But this is a sp special scrubber brush which allows me to pull those colors right off. Thank you so much for watching the video with me and going through the process. If you have any questions, please put those down below and I'll see you on the next one.